Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download and install the CryEngine 3 SDK, along with setting up the appropriate plugins for 3ds Max and Photoshop. First things first, go to crydev.net and you will see this download the free SDK button here. Go ahead and click it, and then press the Download Now button. You should see the download starting at the bottom of your browser, and it's around 1.3 gigs, so depending on your connection, it might take around 20 minutes to an hour to complete. Once it's finished, you can find it in your downloads folder or whichever location you've set for downloads. I'm going to drag mine to my desktop here and then I'll right click it and choose extract all. Now browse to whichever drive you want to use and create a new folder named cryengine 3.4.5 or whichever build it is. If you extract it directly into your drive without a folder, it will spread all the contents out and make a mess. Once it's extracted, the folder becomes your build, which is nice because it doesn't actually install anywhere. For instance, if you're working on a level at home and in class, you would just keep copying the build folder back and forth as you go. This prevents any dependency problems since all the files are nestled within one build folder. Let's take a second and set up our file structure now so that it's nice and clean. First, I recommend creating an objects folder within the game directory. Then, create a folder that will contain all of your unique assets for that level. I'll name mine Future Poly Test. If you keep all of this level's assets within the folder, then you would only have to copy one folder around when working at multiple workstations. It also makes it much easier to migrate your level to a newer build of CryEngine. Now let's create some subdirectories within our test folder. The following would be a good clean starting point. Architecture, Characters, Decals, ground cover, rocks, terrain, trees, and weapons. You'll probably find a need to add more specific categories as the project goes on, but this should be good for now. Next, let's set up Photoshop with the correct plugins. First, make sure Photoshop is closed, then bring up your Photoshop directory with one window, and in the CryEngine folder, go into your Tools directory and locate the CryTIFF plugin. I'm going to grab the 64-bit one since I'm using 64-bit Photoshop. I'll copy it here and then paste it in the Photoshop Plugins folder. Next, we need to grab three files from the Bin32 folder. Select JPEG62, LibTIFF3, and ZLib1, and then paste them into your root Photoshop directory. Now open up Photoshop and let's create a quick test texture to make sure it worked. I'm going to open up a couple source images I've downloaded from cgtextures.com. This site is great reference for high-res source photos, and many game studios use it for production. I'll select these two images and then open them. Next, I'll press Ctrl-N to make a new file, and I'll choose a 1024 by 1024 pixel image size. Next, I'll copy the high-res images and paste them into my texture, and I'll use Ctrl-T to scale them down and position them. I'll also change the background color and use some color correction on this bottom piece. Now, click Save As and navigate to your Game Objects folder we created earlier. I forgot to make a Props folder, so I'll do that now and I'll save this in its own folder, Yellow Box. Um, uh, hold on, let me check if that's the correct term for this object. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, I just got confirmation this is a Yellow Box. Once you create the folder, check your file format here and make sure it's set to CryTIFF. If this doesn't show up, then you probably made a big mistake installing the CryTIFF plugins and you should rewatch the beginning of the tutorial. Once you click Save, the CryTIFF plugin will pop up and give you some different presets and other options. Here you have an option to downsample your texture size upon save so that your source texture size remains intact. Refer to the intro to CryEngine tutorial for more specifics about this plugin. For now, I'll leave it at diffuse underscore low quality and hit the OK button. Now that Photoshop is all set up, let's install the 3ds Max exporter. The Max plugin is quite a bit easier to set up. All we need to do is go back to the Tools folder within the CryEngine build and select one of these CryExport DLUs. These exporters are two numbers higher than the 3ds Max they are meant for, so that means if you're using 3ds Max 2012, then you would need to copy CryExport 14. Likewise, if you're using Max 10, you would need to copy CryExport 12. Also, make sure to grab the underscore 64 version if you're using 64-bit Max. Once you find your exporter, just copy it and then paste it in the plugins folder within the 3D Studio Max directory. 
Also, make sure to paste it in plugins rather than the plug dash ins folder. I have no idea why they would have two. Now when you open up Max, you will get a few messages like these. Go ahead and click run on the first message and the second dialog will ask you where your CryEngine directory is. Redirect it if needed, otherwise just click save. Now I'm going to make a quick test object so that we can test our yellow box texture. First I'm going to bring up the material editor by pressing M and I'll name the material yellow box. Next I'll change the blend setting to Crytek shader. If you forget to do this it won't export properly. Now I can go into the maps drop down and click the diffuse color box, select bitmap and then load our yellow box texture. I can use the go to parent button here to jump back to the top level of our material. Now I'll select the show map and viewport button so that the texture shows up on our object. I'll also apply a quick unwrap UVW modifier to this and then use quick planar map to create some clean UVs. I'm almost ready to export this test, but first we need to save this max file in the yellow box folder we created earlier. When we export it, it will create a CGF file in the same folder as the max file. The CGF is Crytek's standard model file, while the MTL is the material file generated upon export. So if you have a successful export, you should expect a CGF and an MTL in the root folder of your max file. Now let's jump over to our utilities tab. First, we'll need to click the Configure button sets and drag the CryEngine 3 exporter over. Then go ahead and say OK and click on the exporter button. The first thing we want to do is click Create Material under the Materials tab here. It will take a few seconds to load the editor and once it's loaded, click the button again to bring up the save window. You might have to tab back to 3ds Max to do this. If the material editor isn't showing, check your taskbar at the bottom and click the CryEngine button for it to pop back up. This next step is very important because you need to name the CryEngine material the exact same as your Max material so that it is correctly applied to your model in CryEngine. If done correctly, you should see the material pop up and your test texture should be listed here. If not, then make sure you created a CryTIFF texture, saved it in the build directory, and named the material the same name. Sometimes after creating the material from Max, the engine will crash right after, but it's alright. The material should still be saved. Now, with your mesh selected, click the Add Selected button under the Geometry Export dropdown. You should see your object name pop up here. This means you can actually add many individual pieces to the list, and they'll export as one single CGF file. Now, if you want to export multiple CGFs from one Max file, you would check this option here export file per node. This comes in handy when you have many variants of an object type. For instance, if you have four different oak trees in one file and you want to export them individually, you can just check this option. Now we can simply press the export nodes button here and the export should go through smoothly since it's a very basic prop. Now let's open the CryEngine editor which can be found in either the bin32 or bin64 folders depending if you're working on 32 or 64 bit machines. I recommend making a shortcut to your desktop so you don't constantly have to dig through these menus. Now I'm going to open up the example forest level that comes with the CryEngine SDK and I'll fly my camera over to this little fishing village on the coast. Next I'll click on the brush button over on the right and I'll go down to the filter and type in yellow to help locate my yellow box masterpiece. Now I'm going to click this follow terrain button which will allow me to drag the prop out and auto align it to the ground. There she is! Okay, so the first thing you notice is that it's coming in sideways. To fix this, let's jump back over to Max and under the Utilities tab, or the Hammer, there's another useful tool called Reset XForm. You should apply this to your model before exporting so that it treats the current state of your model as its default. I'll press the Reset Selected button and then the Export Nodes button again. Now one of my favorite things about CryEngine is that it updates almost instantly, so if you jump back over to the editor, the yellow box has already been fixed. Next I'll go back into Max and adjust the scale and add some additional geometry. Once I'm ready to export again, I can run the Reset XForm once more and then click Export Nodes. And here we go, immediately updated which makes it all worth the setup time. So that wraps up our chapter on CryEngine setup. Next, refer to our Intro to CryEngine series to continue learning more about this powerful engine.